Okay. Um, hey, Shannon. Thanks for uh, talking with me. Yeah. Um, can you go ahead and tell us kind of your name, um, where or what years you played at Arizona, and then um, your kind of career afterward, how long that's been going on? Yes. Yeah, so my name is Shannon Wingate. Um, my maiden name was Tora Grossa. Um, I played at Arizona 1999 to 02. So that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> through uh, after college, I went to go play um, in Puerto Rico for the Puerto Rican League. Um, and then I also played for the Puerto Rican national team for 10 years. Um, right after, um, I think actually maybe one year during the summertime when I was still in college. Um, and I played uh, in Puerto Rico for a while just because my grandpa, my grandpa's brother was the president of the Olympic Committee. So um, just to play there and kind of, you know, make him proud kind of thing. I played one year in Romania overseas and that was, um, that was cool. Definitely an eye opener. I didn't get paid, so I had to leave there. But um, yeah, I played up until last year. I took two years off. One when I had my ACL surgery in 06. And then and the next one when I had my daughter, Nevea in um, uh, 10 years ago. So those are the two years I took off. So I've been playing professional volleyball for a long time. Yes, that's so awesome. Um, okay, just a few questions kind of about the program and Dave and just your experience. So uh, what advice would you give current players who are playing for Dave, um, kind of speaking from experience, what advice would you give them in communicating with him? Um, you know, well, the rules have definitely changed, like, prior to committing to a school. Um, Dave had to hunt me down to come talk to me. He actually had to come. My dad had a mild heart attack, and he actually came to the hospital to talk to my dad <laughs> to, yeah. to um, get me to come to Arizona. Um, but, uh, I went to Arizona just because I knew what kind of coach I wanted um, and to give players an idea like if you know you need a coach that's hard on you and pushes you and demand things out of you then you need to go to a school that has that kind of coach and coaching staff. Um, I think the coaching staff at Arizona was awesome. Um, you know, Rita really connected with a lot of the girls, you know, kind of good cop, bad cop, but don't get me wrong, Rita can be tough, but you know, <laughs> she knows <laughs> how to connect with different people. Cause you, I, you know, as a coach myself now, you can't really coach everybody the same. So you gotta know how to connect with different players and know how to push them. But, um, you know, I didn't go to Tucson cause of the weather. So, um, <laughs> but I had a lot of the other, there were five starters two years before I finished that were from San Diego. So um, the only one that wasn't was Dana. So, you know, we, um, there's a lot of girls I knew that went there and I knew that was, it was going to be a good fit for me, but you know, you got to know that you're comfortable going to a school that you can be there for four plus years. You know, if you can't see yourself going there and you can't, um, you know, play for a coach that is a certain way, then you need to look for another school. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you mentioned Rita a little bit. I know sometimes for, our team and in my experience sometimes Dave's a little bit challenging to communicate and Rita having so many years of experience with him is kind of a go-between person a lot of times um was that similar for you when you were on the team um you know I played for Dave a little while ago you know we always say when yeah. we come back you know Dave's gone soft he's has he has kids now <laughs> you guys have no idea like you yeah. have a TV right now um <laughs> But, you know, and, and, and he's getting older, you definitely can't hear. So, you know, but um, Rita <laughs> definitely knows how to filter, <laughs> you know, his, his moods or whatever. And, but, um, you know, I, I actually had a lot of meetings with Dave. Um, and, uh, but it's gotten a little bit um, more challenging for you guys, I, I bet. But, um, you know, definitely to have a coaching staff, like I said, and, 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 Gre and you know, Greg's there now. So, you know, you guys, I wish I was there when Greg was there. That would have been awesome. But we also had good other, you know, uh, assistant coaches like Lamb and, and Walker was there. And so, you know. Yeah. So since it was a few years ago that you played for Dave, now coming back and coaching camps, um, you are at camps uh, quite a bit. What have you seen 
how have you seen Dave's coaching style kind of change over the years? Um, you know, I, I, I played middle blocker and then I got pulled at Arizona playing outside with not like a lick of like I had one hit. Dave told my club coach, Hey, put her on a four one time. And that was the only ball I ever hit a high ball on. But, um, <laughs> you know, he definitely knows how to, you know, explain things. Um, obviously the, you know, you guys started swing blocking, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's that, I don't always do that. We were just taught that when we were late, but, um, you know, it, this, everything's basically the same. Rita, you know, takes the middles and I go with Rita and, and Dave has the setters and hitters or whoever he thinks he can do better than at the camp at that point. You know, <laughs> push someone out and let me show you how to set or block or whatever he needs yes. to show you. But, um, you know, I think things are the same and I, I think that is what makes Arizona special. Um, I definitely became a very good blocker there. Um, obviously playing many positions helped with that, but, um, you know, I don't, I swing blocking change, but other than that, you know, a couple of roles changed and stuff like that, but you know, you, you got to adapt to your players, um, and see what works for them. Not everybody does, you know, one thing great. They might do another way better. So I think he's done a great job at adopt, adapting with what he he's bringing in for the team. So, um, what does it mean to you to be a wildcat? Um, I love it. I, every time I see someone with like an Arizona shirt, I literally like run them down. I'm like, bear down. You know, you guys have like a new thing now. Like we didn't do that, but yeah. you know, um, definitely, you know, Hey, bear down or Hey, I like your shirt or, you know, yeah, we didn't yeah. do that. So, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's always going to be something that's part of my life and, and that I'm honored to be a part of and, um, you know, to come back and, and see camps and see the program progress and, and get to where it is now is, you know, it's really, um, it makes me happy to see what's going on and how, you know, that program has gotten to a certain level. Yeah. Um, so obviously making it deep in the NCAA tournament is a goal of everyone going into college and, you know, like just making it as far as possible is always a goal. Um, what do you think separates a team um, the individuals on the team and also the team as a whole, what do you think separates teams that help them um, get far in the playoffs and, and reach the final four? Um, you know, I, a goal, obviously, you know, you have to have that willingness to sacrifice some of the things that we like to do, you know, like, I know you guys still do sacrifices, right, Rita? You guys still do sacrifices? Yeah, you know, doing that, um, you know, coming in and doing extra work, not being told to come in and do work, knowing that you have to get better at something and come in. Um, definitely team chemistry helps. Um, thank the Lord I've never been on a team that has really bad chemistry. Um, but, you know, we were all super close. Like I told you, a majority of our team was from San Diego. So um, that helped us a lot. And just having people on the team that are going to push you, whether you like it or not, you know, sometimes it's not always the coach's job to do that. Sometimes it's you know, hold ourselves accountable on the court to do that. And, um, you know, having past athletes like Rita and we'll, we'll say Dave, but you know, um, <laughs> you know, and I, and, and, and knowing what it takes to get there and saying, no, like you can do more, like you can do this, you know, when you're tired, believe me, every time we had spring training, I always told Rita, I'm going to die on the first day. I'm not going to finish. But after that, I was good, you know, so just being mentally tough and, and, you know, having that mindset that, you know, you're the only one standing in your own way, so. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think you grew as an athlete and a person from the time you came into Arizona as a freshman to the time that you finished? Ooh. Um, a, a lot. You know, Rita can tell you some stories, but um, <laughs> definitely uh, being more responsible, um, you know, knowing what it takes to, to – do a job or do, you know, do your job when you're playing a professional sport, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of players I see come out there and they think it's like fun and games, like you're playing for money now. So if you don't do your job, they're going to send you home on the next flight next week, you know? So, um, uh, and just being responsible and knowing that you have things you have to do, you know, I have a, a paper, I have a calendar, I have it on my phone, you know, I set alarms, you know, because I am getting older and my memory is not that great. But, um, you know, just being accountable for what you have to do for yourself. And now I have a child, I have a child, so that's even more, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just communicating more too, you know, like if, 
you know you have to do stuff communicate Rita I know Rita was always like hey if you something comes to call me you know we'll try to figure something out or whatever but you know that comes a lot to play into your jobs like I had a real job about two years ago and I was like wow like this is a big drastic change out of the sports world you know so mm -hmm. um you definitely are um your mentality is you know a little bit you know different than I would say like random people that haven't gone through top sports like you know us athletes have so I definitely agree um did you always know that you wanted to continue playing professionally after college and kind of when did you make that decision um I didn't um but I'm super competitive so I just went with it um I actually got my degree in sociology and criminal justice um I always wanted to get into the law enforcement uh, that stuff always intrigued me something like that and I'm currently trying to work on that right now um I just have a, a couple things I have to you know get done first but um I did it you know it just kind of went with the flow and you know I have a lot of people that come up to me and be like you know like I think I'm not gonna play anymore and I look at them and I'm like yeah okay you know because it's you can only do this for so long like thank the lord I've been blessed to like my body's held up to play for so long but you know play for as long as you can you travel for free you know you get paid a decent amount you know um you get to see new places see new people see new styles of volleyball um you know and I loved it um it's just kind of hard to jump into the real world after that but you know if you have a plan and you know what you want to do it's it's not going to be that difficult what has kept you um wanting to keep playing professionally as as long as you have um I like I, I think I talked to Rita about this a couple years ago I was like I you know I I make a, I make okay money but you know like I'm I'm competitive you know what I mean like mm -hmm. it's like the kind of competitive like oh you blocked me okay you're gonna set me and I'm gonna rip your finger off on this next one you know what I mean that's that's yeah. I just love to compete and whatever you know I played I played basketball for a little bit at Arizona I you know I played softball was my main sport and I was really good at softball we won't talk about that Rita I have to still talk about Dave about that one <laughs> we, had an agreement. we had an agreement when I came to Arizona but um you know I just like to be I like you know competing and and stuff like that um so I mean that's just how I, I grew up with boys so I that's probably a, a factor in it too so yeah um you mentioned other sports I was also I played all three of those sports as well softball and basketball um I know a lot of times now people are kind of specializing in one sport um what do you think like the importance is in in playing multiple sports and not just devoting every single moment to one sport um that's a uh, yeah because I coach you know I coached at coast for a very long time and then when I moved to San Antonio I coached with Alamo when I'm here and you know I see so many coaches now that are just like you, you can't play multiple sports and I'm just like you can tell the people that play one sport body wise and just all around athlete wise um i i think it's it's important for you to play more than one sport um just for your your body health i think you can develop a, a stronger muscles playing different sports and you don't have to really lift at a young age because i didn't lift until i got to arizona and i was i was a big girl you know i was big yeah i was yeah i, I think i can squat like three high three something so um but I encourage it, you know, I tell my girls, just let me know, like if we have a tournament, obviously I don't want you missing that practice before the tournament. If it's a game, then okay, we have to talk about it. But um, I, I like it. I think it's important that girls um, still play multiple sports. It's, and I hear this excuse, so they just don't have enough time. Like I played three sports and two travel ball teams. Like it's possible, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, I mean, obviously the tournaments and qualifiers are more, are more now, but you know, like it's possible. So I encourage it. A lot of other things written down, but let's see. Um, how important were the relationships that you built in your four years of college? Like, do you still stay in contact with a lot of people that you were at Arizona with or kind of what does that look like for you? Um, yeah, I still talk to a lot of girls, you know, we, um, not like every day, but, you know, we still chit chat or see, you know, posts on Facebook. Um, I probably talk to Rita and Dave more than I talk to the girls, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's a special time. You'll always remember your time in college and the relationships you make. Um, you know, uh, I went back to my, not even on college. I went back to my 20 year 
high school reunion and saw the girls I played volleyball with. Yeah. So, I mean, and I haven't spoken to them forever, but you know, it's cool to see people and see, you know, what they're up to now and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I still, I still have good relationships with all the, the players. I don't really know what else to I have a question. Rita. Yeah. <clears throat> Cupcake. <laughs> Give me your best day of impersonation. <laughs> I don't know why. The only I, let me see, Dave. Who was setting? I don't know who was setting. I think it was maybe Lauren was setting one day and he literally caught the ball, stopped it, kicked her out of the drill and started to play with us and said, this is how you set. And it was, it was horrible. It wasn't that great. But, um, you know, I like Dave. Dave's awesome. He has a funny side. Well, he thinks he's funny, but you know, um, you know, he's very serious. He can be serious. He's very demanding. And I think he's a great all around coach. Um, like I said, and, and to have Rita there was funny. You know, it was fun. You know, we just look at Rita and be like, but, um, some things never change. I I saw your interview with um, you, uh, Greg and Dave, and I didn't know who the other guy was. Danny is our SID. Okay. And you were talking about how you dislocated Dave's shoulder. We were at Cal's gym. I don't know what year it was. Cal's little rec center. They didn't even have a gym yet, but they, we had to go to the rec center and play. And Dave went to the gym, was messing around. I don't know what he's doing. I think there was water on the floor. And we're getting ready right in the, in the beginning. Dave's off, I don't know, exploring, trying to act like he's athletic. And he comes back and he sprains, he sprained his ankle, apparently. Do you remember that, Rita? He sprained his ankle. Dave, and then I saw that one surfboard during the quarantine thing. I was yes. like, oh, my God, Dave's going to bust <laughs> his head on the side of the pool. Dave doesn't think it is hilarious, but you know Dave's Dave's awesome. You can always get a fun uh, some funny story out of Dave. I mean, one time he came into when we had breakfast, like um, we were at a away game, and Rita's always the one that has breakfast in her room. Well, I, at least that's what we did. And he comes in, and we're doing scouting report early, and he comes in, he grabs a box of cereal, he goes, "Hey guys, cereal killer," and we're like, <laughs> with a box of cereal. Dave is. He's hilarious. He still does all of that. Oh, all of that. <laughs> and then it's even worse it. when Jerry Jerry enters the scene. So yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Jerry? <laughs> Jerry thinks. <laughs> look, Jerry's not gonna see. Jerry thinks he's the reason. Yes. <laughs> that I was so awesome at Arizona. Yes. You know, between his his random talks and and Dave's you know meetings in his office, um, but you know. See, Paige, nothing is. Everyone changed. calls Jerry my grandpa. Every time he comes to the gym, they're like, Paige, your grandpa's <laughs> let me, here. Let me have a Jerry story. Uh-oh. We were in spring training in the new training room, and we're doing turf work, whatever. And Jerry, I don't, I don't know if you were doing turf oh, work. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Jerry was on the treadmill. I don't know where, what Dave or Rita was doing. <laughs> All we hear is, <laughs> and we look over. Jerry's trying to take off his sweatshirt on the treadmill, and Jerry eats it. And we're like, so he goes into the training room and gets checked out out by the main trainer i was like oh my lord but oh my stomach hurt yes yes we had some fun we we had fun times you know before you guys you know in our days rita and dave actually used to do all the spring training with us so everything Mm -hmm. that you guys did they did and dave used to dave used to who did he not beat dana who's up there frosty frosty no yeah, he, Dave was always up there, though. And then Rita was always, of course, running with me. <laughs> it's like, I got you, Shannon. <laughs> Dave ran a shuttle this spring. He, he did? He what? did run a shuttle. There I was one day know. he just ran a down and back, and he was toast after that. And then I think it was the next week, he's like, all right, I'm doing a full one. He ran the whole thing, and I think he missed the time that we were supposed to get. He missed it by, like, 12 seconds or something. <laughs> yeah. But he did the whole thing, so we were all like, okay, we respect that. Yeah, yeah but Dave used to do everything with us. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was one summer, I think me and Stephanie stayed, and, and I don't know if it was during summer or it was actual workout, but, you know, in the very top of McHale, that's where we did our mile stuff, in the very okay, top. Yeah. And we're running, and, and Carla at the time goes – you know, if, if you guys finish this under, I don't know what it was, like seven, six, seven minutes or something like that, then we don't have to do the next phase of, of conditioning. And, or, and then, uh, I don't know what happened, but me and Stephanie were in the back. See, I don't know if it was summertime or during the actual spring team, 
but there was an old guy. He always ran up there every day. Always. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what it is. She's like, if, if you can beat this old guy, then you guys are done. And he starts slowing down. And we're like, oh, we're going to get him. And then she knew him personally. She's like, if you let those girls beat you, I'm going to like, you know. But um, yeah, there was, there was fun times. There was one time where we didn't have to do conditioning because I did 10 cartwheels. Carla didn't think I could do 10 cartwheels. I was like, really? But <laughs> and one time you guys brought her breakfast. Oh, yeah. We brought her breakfast so we didn't have to die. <laughs> yeah. None of that stuff will work with Jim Page. Jim would too. never. We'd bring her breakfast. He'd be like, oh, I already ate, but thanks. Get on the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a he's hard one, too. But yeah, Carla, Carla was, yeah. You know, she's at Pima now, Shannon. She's froze, but. Oh, she's frozen. Yeah. She was special, but she is. You me? She's at Pima now. She, she is. Volleyball. Yeah. Aww. So a lot of my club kids that go to Pima, they know her and like, oh my gosh, she's so rough, but we like her. And I was like, yep, that's Carla. So she's Deep like, down, Jim is a softy, but he just likes to pretend that he's really, really tough. Yeah. That's a good picture for her to be posed in. <laughs> One time. <laughs> so. Am I frozen still? You were. Uh, no, you were, but there were great candid shots. <laughs> No wonder. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.